Elizabeth Francis wants to know how many cigarettes are smoked in the movie Casino? Wait, oh. can I answer that? It's my brother. Oh, you want to put him on speakerphone? Yeah, let's let put him on speakerphone. This was, this was, Joe, hold on. This wasn't pre planned. I want you people to know. Joe, I'm taping something right now. You want to say hello to the people, Joe? No. Go ahead, say something. No, answer. Go ahead, tape. I'll talk to you. Your new tape is good. So you're being heard. Anyway, all right, listen, I'm going to hang up. I got to, I got to, I'm, I'm doing shit over here. I'll, I'll call you when I'm done. Right. Goodbye. Bye. That's my brother. That wasn't planned either. Now, what was the, now what would you want to talk about? Colada, colada, grab your favorite brew. Ask a question, he'll answer it for you. The mafia, the mafia, the mafia, the mafia. You better hit the scribe if you know what's good for you. Drinking a cup of coffee with Frank Colada. He'll tell you a lot of, he's Frank Colada. How many cigarettes are smoked in the movie Casino? Uh, he never really inhaled. Okay. You know, uh, I don't believe he smoked at all. Uh, nor did Pesci smoke cigars. So that's more or less because of that year everybody smoked. And uh, then we're movie cigarettes. I call them movie cigarettes. All right, so back to Tony. What was he like as far as, because he's depicted as this really vicious guy in the movie Casino, but they also show him making pancakes for his son Vincent and, you know, and being this loving father. Is there the weird, was there a dichotomy there? I mean, was there two sides to this guy? No, yes, maybe there was. He did genuinely love that, that boy. And he genuinely, no matter where we were at 4.30, 5, 6 in the morning, and that was every night we were out. He would make sure he was home to send his uh, son off to school. Now, did he cook breakfast for him? I don't know that. I didn't go to his house with him that early. I believe his wife Nancy did it, but he was there to see the kid off to school. This is what I believe. Tony Berardi, my God, Frank, watching just one of your videos is better than sitting through one of Marty's films. I always thought Casino was one huge miscast film. I mean. They were all New York, New Jersey actors portraying Chicago outfit guys. You know more than anyone how different Chicago was from New York. No comparison. This is just something that's always bothered me about the film. Also, didn't Detroit have a big stake in Vegas as well? And did you ever have any dealings with the Detroit guys? A lot of people are asking about the Detroit guys, not just Tony. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First of all, let me knock Detroit out. They were good. They were solid guys, tough group of guys. They had their little investments in Vegas. I mean, separate from what ours did. I mean, they did their business, we did our business. We let them do what they want to do. Uh, consider them like part of the Chicago outfit. That's the way I considered them. They didn't step on us and we didn't step on them. No, I respected them guys. Good group of guys, tough guys. What was the other part? The casting of the movie, all New York instead yeah, of you know, Chicago. When you get a director that's from New York and you got everybody in the movie, the actors are all from New York, even the... Even the secondary actors are all from New York. They're a bunch, it's clannish. I'm the only Chicago guy in the movie, you know? And this is the way Hollywood is. They use all New York guys. Not that these guys can't act. But you got an effing Chicago movie, Vegas movie, you know? It would have been, I think, a better movie if you used Chicago characters. I had to tell them how to talk like we talk. They speak completely different slang. I mean, many a times I had to change things around through that whole movie. What are you gonna do? Marty's partial to New York. Now, Marty's partial to being a Sicilian. He's Sicilian. If you're Sicilian, there's nothing you could do wrong. Of course, I'm Sicilian and, and but A's. So I got away. I, he wasn't gonna tell me what to do. I had to tell him to go scratch his ass. I mean, I don't care. He's, so he's a director. That don't mean nothing to me. You know, and I, I don't kiss nobody's ass. Never kiss Tony's. I'm going to kiss his ass. He's not paying me. The production company or the movie company is. So what else? Okay. I, I can't even say this name. Raja, Rajan, Perjami. Perj oh, I, Jesus I'm, Christ. <laughs> One more question. There was a scene in Casino where another crew were chased out of the Stardust, and they used, quote, waiting on Carmine. Was the code 
Was that code used for something? It came so naturally as if it meant something. Waiting on karma? Yeah, never Tony chased? walks up to the guys and they're standing by the cashier's cage. We're waiting on karma. Yeah, karma. for karma. He was here before, I saw him. He had a suitcase and everything and then he left. Karma left? Huh. Karma left. Yeah, that's a bullshit scene. That guy uh, that you've seen in that scene was real good friends with Nick Pelleggi's brother. You know, Nick Pelleggi that did the writing in a movie. So when you belong, you're hooked up with somebody in the movie, they ask for favors, you put them in the movie. So this guy was put into that scene, a created scene. You know, <laughs> he was another guy that was from New York. I'm on, on Thay, I couldn't believe it. But anyway, yeah, okay. that's a bullshit scene. Now everybody's asking this as well on the channel. We're getting a ton of this comments. F Lefty. Lefty was an informant. When did you find out that Lefty was an informant? Nobody. It's it, it just common sense, my friend. Just common sense. Everybody gets indicted on the skim. Everybody gets locked up except Tony. He did get busted for it, but he had a, was in a hospital with a quadruple bypass. Me? I was in the witness protection program in Mobile, Alabama. Lefty's the only one walking around the streets. Nobody would hang with him because they weren't sure if he was a rat or not. He not one time sat on the set when we were doing the movie. And this movie was about him. He must have, I mean, people had a feeling he was, he rolled, but nobody could prove none. They didn't let it out of the bag. I guess that's the kind of deal he cut with the feds. Eventually, you would have probably had to testify in court uh, somewhere down the line. They could use him while the trial is going on. They didn't have to expose him sooner. He wasn't wanted in the town no more. They even put him in the black book. Because uh, the, the gaming commission didn't even know that he was cooperating with the feds. But I put two and two together. I said, this guy's got to be a rat. He don't even want to come on the set. He knew I was going to be there every day. He, he wouldn't come. If he could, I wouldn't have been there every day. That's reality. So I put it together. Now I'm often asked this question on my personal tours. I have a private tour company. Who killed Lefty? And I bring up to the location, or who tried, attempted to kill Lefty, I'm sorry. And I bring up to the location where the attempt on his life was made. When I was notified that day that happened, the FBI notified me and they said, they told me what happened and I said, yeah, I seen it on TV. Again, remember, I was in Mobile, Alabama. They says, who do you think done it? I said, well, if you're thinking that his wife had something to do with it for the insurance purpose policy, I doubt it. She was living with some motorcycle gang in LA. If you think Chicago outfit had something to do with it, I doubt it very seriously. All the bosses are in jail. These underlinks that worked for the bosses, they weren't getting no money for the skim. Now they'll take over the alpha. What are they gonna go kill? For the bosses, forget it, they ain't gonna do that. I said, no. Kansas City's another story. I says, if I was a betting man, I'd lay money on that. It was Kansas City. Oh, I, I said, I'm telling you. First off, it was, an, it was not an ignition bomb. If it were an ignition bomb, the dynamite would have been placed underneath the driver's seat. If it was a remote control, everything's on the outside of the car. It's a remote. You don't have to hook it to the ignition. There's a possibility it's gonna live. Maybe without legs and arms, but there's a possibility. So that car was placed underneath that bomb, and I told the feds that and I was proven right. And then I come to find out uh, sometime after that, a couple of guys from Kansas City were killed. And I assumed that these were the guys that placed the bomb. And if you don't do the job right, nine times out of 10, they kill you. This is my belief. I could be wrong. So take that with a grain of salt, okay? That's my, that's my answer. Okay, Frank, so we're gonna finish up this one with a, um, I call it the funny ha-ha section. <laughs> funny ha-ha. Uh, funny ha-ha. Uh, 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 funny ha-ha comments. I'm gonna put this on for the last. I need a drink of uh, oxygen. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, metalhead. 
Whoever the hell Metalhead is, Metal. you're a funny dude. Here's what he wrote. I sure ain't Metalhead. <laughs> Uncle Frankie hired me to make sure you prescribe. I've got the vice ready, so prescribe or else. <laughs> and Matt Hawkins wrote, Do you know Bugs the Bugle Boy, Bamboni? He used to run with Charlie No Neck and Jimmy the Jackhammer. They used to pull jobs on the south side, got into a little scrap with Dutch, the oven, Mick Mick, and let's just say, all damn three of them showed up to dinner on time. <laughs> that's a this guy should have been a comedian. You're missing your calling. That's right? that's clever. I like that. <laughs> and lastly, Tim Donovan. Prescribed. Bafangul, you got me at Bafangul. it now. I like my thumbs how they are. <laughs> well, you don't want to hammer thumbs. Ah, oh, you could count that money real nice. All right. That it? Okay. <laughs> Again, enjoy it. Have a coffee with Colada. You read that? I'm going to have my signature on them pretty soon. Or they're on there now, I think. This is the first cup. I kept number one. Have a good day, and I'm sure you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. I'll be back on in a day or two. I'm having fun doing this. Good night. Talk to you later. Salute.